Warrior is one of the most exceptional TV shows out right now, and I just want to show some appreciation for it and hopefully prove to you why you should watch it. At first, of course, the spectacular fight scenes are what draw your attention to the show. The choreography is practically unmatched by anything on TV right now, and the climactic confrontations put even final fight scenes and other full-length films to shame. There's basically no annoying shaky cam, so you can follow the action incredibly well. You can tell the crew has a phenomenal amount of care and love for the craft, and put time and effort in to make every brawl the best that it can be. They also have first-rate cinematography and top-of-the-line set pieces to make the world feel unique, real, and lived in. The wardrobes that each different character wear are beautifully crafted, and the score is just insanely good. Now I want to show an overview of some of the cast, and I'll give a spoiler warning when I delve into deep content past just the first couple of episodes. Assam is the show's main protagonist. His original purpose for coming to San Francisco is to look for his sister, Mai Ling, who came to America a few years earlier. Assam soon finds out that she's married to one of the leader of the Tongs, the Long Zi, and going back to China is no longer an option for her. He has joined another Tong, the Hop Wei, and is burned in, so leaving isn't a great option for him either. Even though he is now in the Hop Wei and has duties and obligations to them, he still often goes out of his way to try to do the right thing and help other people. In the second episode, he is confronted by Penny Blake, the mayor's wife, who publicly calls him out for collecting money from a store owner. You think you're so tough, intimidating an old man? You're cowards. Please, missus, they don't understand you. I think they understand me perfectly. Assam recognizes that she's right. He is indeed squeezing money out of a fellow Chinese immigrant but also isn't in a position to change the way things are run by the Tongs. Determined to prove to her, and I'd say himself as well, that he is indeed a good person, when Penny drops a handkerchief, he follows her into a different part of town to return it to her. Two Irishmen harass and assault her and her servant, but then Assam swoops in to save the day. Needless to say, the outcome of this is less than favorable because of the racial bias the police have against the Chinese. She is the wife of the mayor of San Francisco and is repulsed and disgusted by him and the policies he is trying to push. She was basically forced to marry him by her father for political gain. The fact that she is often near politics but in no position to cause any change or even speak her mind because she is a woman and not taken seriously is incredibly frustrating for her. We brought with us God and civility. You mean because we murdered them by the thousands with bullets instead of tomahawks and spears? I imagine they would have wanted to enact an exclusion act all their own where we were concerned. As you can see, on the occasion that she is able to state her opinion publicly in an intelligent manner, she is of course met with condensation and disregarded. Uh, I guess you lost her vote, Senator. <laughs> if she had one. <laughs> Moments like these of racial commentary are handled so well in the show. They are earned and make sense in the context. They are also accurate to the time and brutally honest throughout. They don't come across as cringy or pandering because the dialogue and characters are written with so much nuance and expert craftsmanship that you can see and understand every character's motivation for why they think and behave the way they do. He is promoted to sergeant and is responsible for leading a task force whose main purpose is to police crime in Chinatown. He is a seasoned cop who now doesn't do much actual police work and just wants an easy 9 to 5 job to get through the day. Like many, he also doesn't like the influx and immigration of the Chinese and thinks of his interactions with the Chinese as just cleaning up mess after mess. When it comes to the Chinese, we're not cops. We're janitors. Our job is to mop it up and get the hell out of the way before the blades start to fly again. He often busts heads with Richard Lee, a newcomer to the force that still has some optimism and naively thinks that the police are trying to solve Chinese murders and actually make a difference. A lot of the humor in the show comes from brilliantly written dialogue between the two. God is punishing me. I'm pretty sure he's not. And how would you know? Because he's not there. Lee's Southern Georgia charm and farm phrases. It's nothing gained him pounding the tar off and drunk. 
One of these days, I reckon you'll be sober. And when that day comes, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, won't be enough left to you to spread on toast. In juxtaposition to Bill's grumpy and nihilistic outbursts is classic. You stay the fuck out of my business, and I'll stay the fuck out of yours. Bill nevertheless sees something in Lee and asks him to join his Chinatown task force. I don't understand the word you just said, but I like the way you said it. You're hired. Mr. Leary runs an Irish pub called the Banshee and has put himself in a leadership role in the Irish community. He hates the Chinese for coming in and working for less money, thus putting Irishmen out of work. It's ironic, and they address this in the show, that the Irishmen are also immigrants to the United States themselves. Maybe Mr. Leary thinks that because the Irish were there first that they belong, or the fact that they already speak the language and can assimilate into American culture more easily that they are better than the Chinese. At one point, Mr. Leary actually stands up for two black men that are about to get attacked in his bar. These daft bastards thought they could have a drink in our pub. And give them their fucking drinks. But Mr. Leary, these, these men have done nothing to you. Everything's been done to them. You think their people wanted to come here? They were fucking dragged here in chains. The contrast for his empathy for black people and his hostility towards the Chinese is an intriguing look into his character's beliefs. Now moving forward, I'm going to analyze content deep in season two, so here's a heavy spoiler warning. A toy is the owner and the headmistress of a brothel in Chinatown. At the time, it was a big accomplishment for a woman, albeit a Chinese woman, to be able to own and manage a business of this size in San Francisco. She is acquiring a livelihood off of prostituting and literally buying her own Chinese women to exploit and make a living off of. She justifies her actions by saying the girls have nowhere else to go and she is taking care of them. While this may be somewhat true, her actions are put into question when she meets Nellie Davenport. She's a widow who uses her fortune to rescue Chinese sex slaves from horrible lives and gives them a new home at a vineyard where they can reside peacefully and make an honest living for themselves. Exploitation of one's own people is a theme that runs throughout the show and makes characters extremely captivating. You to save world again. Oh no, just your people, since you're too busy exploiting them. Well, someone has to. <laughs> save them or exploit them? Yes. A toy exploits her people through sex. Mr. Leary takes his cut from the Irishmen he gets jobs for, even though he knows they can barely feed their families. And later on, when Mai Ling is running the Long Z, she starts to get power hungry and screw over people she had former deals with and charge them money for protection. And in exchange for 40% of your monthly revenue, you'll receive protection. We were just asking for a small advance. And instead, you got a partner. Now to get to one of the craziest, most brutal moments in the whole show, the lynching of Jacob. It feels like all the rage building up throughout the whole show finally explodes by the spark of the Irish lynching Jacob in the streets in broad daylight. They then proceed to march into Chinatown and absolutely demolish the shops and homes and brutalize any Chinese in their path. I love debates about the arguments around the idea of frontier justice, and one of my favorite quotes about the topic comes from dialogue said by Oswaldo Mowbray in The Hateful Eight when he is explaining the difference between a hangman killing a criminal after a lawful trial versus the family of the victim forcefully dragging them through the snow and hanging them by the neck until they're dead. The man who pulls the lever that breaks your neck will be a dispassionate man. And that dispassion is the very essence of justice. For justice delivered without dispassion is always in danger of not being Justice. This instance of frontier justice and warrior is a thought-provoking example of the difference between deontological ethics and consequentialism. Deontological ethics is the idea that the morality of an action should be based on whether the action itself is right or wrong under a series of rules or laws, while consequentialism is the idea that the morality of an action is to be judged solely by its consequences. It's interesting to think about that once the police took Jacob in, he would likely be found guilty of murder and hanged anyways. Which obviously, in this instance, would be morally wrong anyways because he was acting in defense of Penny. But regardless, the outcome of him dying by being hanged would be the same. So why does it feel so wrong to hang him in the street if the outcome is exactly the same as in a consequentialist result? Like Oswaldo Mowbray explains, To me, it doesn't matter what you did. When I hang you, I'll get no satisfaction from your death. It's my job. I hang you in Red Rock. I move on to the next town. I hang someone else there. The idea of justice has to do with who is doing the killing and why. The Irishmen are acting in a vengeful and prejudiced way, motivated by their racist hatred of the Chinese. While the more lawful outcome would still end with the hangman killing Jacob, 
but not with dispassionate hatred, but by upholding the law and punishing the wrongdoer for their crimes. Again, in poor Jacob's case, it would still be unjust, but for a guilty party, it would be justice. That is, if you agree with capital punishment in the first place. If not, then that's a different discussion entirely. The culmination of all these events leads to what I believe to be one of the best episodes of television ever. The Hop Wei and the Long Z finally working together, the Irish aggression being shown in full spectacle, the police trying to contain it all. It really seems too awesome to be true, but Warrior shows it in full. And just the logistics of all the extras fighting and the choreography this pulled off in a single episode is unprecedented. It's a miracle that we get such a treat. Now that HBO has picked up the series and are filming season 3 now, I can't wait to see what the creators have planned as the series moves forward. Warrior is truly a masterpiece.